why it ain't gonna happen. Now. I will. I told Tim. I told um Tim Zhu when he came on the show. I said you're not gonna get a fight with Jamal Charlo. I said just let that go. That fight's not gonna happen because I know that there's he don't want that night. Same thing with with uh with uh, Tank. All respect to Tank and his and his people, and they they already know I love them, but they're not coming up to 140 to fight you. And Devin Haney showed himself to be too strong, too fast, too big, too everything. They do the catch weight. They'll try to bring you that 137 and try to pull you down, pull as much out of you as, as they can. Uh, Adrian Browner did that with, when I fought him. And we were supposed to fight at 147. He made the contract weight at 144 just to try to pull something out of me. They're going to, this is what the business is. If you're not a part of the plan, what do we put in place so that you never get never get to become a part of the plan? Never had any part of the plan. Not at not at 135 and not at 140. At, at, at 135, but not at 140. I beg to do. Those are the words of Sean Showtime Porter as he proclaims that Tank will never fight Devin Haney. Because of what you guys just heard and, and me counterpunching what Sean Showtime Porter says, obviously, I don't want to discredit anything Sean says because Sean's been there. He used his own example with a guy that was a part of the plan, which was Adrian, the problem Broner at the time. He fought Broner in 2015. I remember seeing that fight and I remember Sean Porter beating Adrian Broner, but getting dropped in the 12th and final round. Okay. And I did. I was unaware about the stipulations about the rehydration and the catch weight or whatever. And I think what it is with Tank and the crew that he's in, they're, they play ball and they're very shrewd, but they're very unfair. You know, they don't care about fairness. They don't care about competition. They care about what benefits them on how they get the money okay how does that happen how does how do we get to the point uh or how do we get the advantage over this fighter that is not as really as popular as me but is just as evenly you know matched or uh a challenge you know so they look at the risk versus reward that's why those uh catch weights are in place okay so they are one of the pe they are some of the people that do that constantly. You know, as you heard Javante Tank Davis say that he's not going to 140, but he's already went to 140. You know, and I think that's such a cop out and it's such a letdown for Tank because Tank doesn't understand. He will be looked at in some circles, only some circles, as one of the best. But if you never fight the best, you will always be, for one, a shadow of Floyd Mayweather Jr. For two, a copycat or a duplicate of Floyd Mayweather Jr. Okay? And Floyd, um, Money Mayweather is a guy that he will never get credit based on his business decisions on how he made Canelo go to 152 instead of 154. You know what I mean? Praise Canelo, praise Cody, praise fighting Cotto at 154 when he ridiculed Manny Pacquiao for making Cotto come to at a catch weight, but he did the same to Canelo. You see what I mean? So, like those guys really pretty much did the same shit. You know, um, I think they, if they care about their reputation, which I don't think they don't. I don't think they care about other circles because if they have people that are honestly criticizing them, they'll just rather call them haters. You know what I mean? Just to dismiss the logic of what they're trying to make and say. See, Sean Porter tomorrow or the, or the week after will be labeled a hater simply for him saying, oh, well, he'll never fight Devin Haney at 140 because I did the same and I had the same situation with uh, Adrian Broner. Okay, so... Yeah, I don't think that'll happen either. I do agree with Sean Porter. And again, how would you argue with him? He's been there. He's done that. You know, he's he's exactly where Devin Haney is. I just think Sean Porter was a lot more exciting than Devin Haney is. But the similarities are just in your face. Think about it. You know, you got Devin Haney. Bill Haney is his manager, you know, trained him. You know what I mean? Did everything for him. And then basically he's running his career just like 
uh, Sean Porter's dad, Kenny Porter, did for him. You know, that father-son duo was alive in effect, okay? So he knows exactly what it's like to be an ambitious uh, fighter or, or have an ambitious father, you know, that's trying to get these fights and what they had to go through in order to get those fights. Because, see, here's the thing. If Sean Porter would have never agreed to 144, he wouldn't have never fought Adrian Broner to beat Adrian Broner and got that win under his belt to move on to the next level to fight the Keith Thurmans and those guys. You know what I'm saying? So you have to keep that in mind. You know, we can talk about, you know, Tank Davis and Floyd, boom, money Mayweather all we want. But if you, if you want those fights, those guys will pick uh, cherries and guys you never heard of all day long until that guy either gets old or retires or they wait for somebody else to get old, you know what I mean, in order to fight them. So in order to get that fight secured, you have to make sacrifices, especially being the B side of the equation. Hey, it's boxing, the sport that I love that I hate so much for a reason, right? You guys tell me what you think about Sean Showtime's Porter's comments towards Tank Davis. Of course, please subscribe. And you guys been counterpunch. Peace.